Yeah, the title of my paper is In the Afterlife, Black Lesbian Spatialities Under Homo Nationalism. And I'll be giving you a quick insight into one of my main interlocutors, which is a black lesbian poet by the name of Pat Parker, who is a really important um, black lesbian um, activist in the Bay Area. Um, she unfortunately passed away at the age of um, 45 due to pancreatic cancer. So a lot of my dissertation deals with themes of premature death, uh, which really comes from Ruth Wilson Gilmore's um, Golden Gulag, and really think about kind of what I'm calling the erotics of spatial dispossession and the pornographic um, aspects that carceral spaces bring and that people witness these processes and how they like to navigate all of that. So yeah, I'll be reading a poem by her and then going into my paper. It's titled, Where Will You Be? Boots are being polished, trumpeters clean their horns, chains and locks forged, the crusade has begun. Once again, flags of Christ are unfurled in the dawn and cries of soul saviors sing apocalyptic, apocalyptic on airwaves. Citizens, good citizens, all parade into voting booths and in self-righteous sanctity, ex away our right to life. I do not believe as some that the vote is an end. I fear even more it is just the beginning. So I must make assessment, look to you and ask, where will you be when they come? They will not come a mob rolling through the streets, but quickly and quietly moving into our homes and remove the evil, the queerness, the faggotry, the perverseness from their midst. They will not come clothed in brown and swat stickers or bearing chest heavy with gleaming crosses. The time and need for those bruises are over. They will come in business suits to buy your homes and bring bodies to fill your jobs. They will come in robes to rehabilitate and white coats to subjugate. And where will you be when they come? Where will we all be when they come? And they will come. They will come because we are defined as opposite, perverse. And we are perverse. Every time we watched the queer hassled in the streets and said nothing, it was an act of perversion. Every time we lied about the boyfriend or girlfriend at coffee break, it was an act of perversion. Every time we heard, I don't mind gays, but why must they be so blatant, and said nothing, it was an act of perversion. Every time we let a lesbian mother lose her child and did not fill the courtrooms, it was an act of perversion. Every time we let straights make out in our bars while we couldn't touch because of laws, it was an act of perversion. Every time we put on the proper clothes to go to a family wedding and left our lovers at home, it was an act of perversion. Every time we heard who I go to bed with is my personal choice, it's personal, not political, and said nothing, it was an act of perversion. Every time we let straight relatives bury our dead and push our lovers away, it was an act of perversion. And they will come. And they will come for the perverts. And it won't matter if you're homosexual, not a faggot, lesbian, not dyke, gay, not queer. It won't matter if you own your business, have a good job, or own SSI. It won't matter if you're black, Chicano, Native American, Asian, or white. It won't matter if you're from New York or Los Angeles, or Los Angeles Galveston, or Sioux Falls. It won't matter if you're butch or femme, not into roles, monogamous, non-monogamous. It won't matter if you're Catholic, Baptist, Atheist, Jewish, or MCC. Because when they will come, they will come. They will come to the cities and to the land, to your front rooms and in your closets. They will come for the perverts. And where, where will you be when they come? That was Pat Parker in 1977. Let's give it up. The black lesbian must be abstracted. She must be made to be more than a metaphor for the pornographic. The black lesbian has a particular way of knowing space, of reading space as a deviant subject. This talk is an overview of my motivations, my research objectives, and overall discipline implications. I seek to assert that a black lesbian reading of space provides an alternative understanding of what boring old as David Harvey understands as accumulation by dispossession. Instead, I seek to lay out for everyone that dynamics of displacement are a form of the expanded reproduction of indigenous dispossession and that black lesbian articulation seeks to point out how our willful unfreedom is a continuum of legacies of settler colonialism, but that's for the dissertation. This talk is about the poem, Where Will You Be? 
Pat Parker asked rhetorically the question in which she knows the answer to, which is not here. I will situate the poem in the context of when it was written, 1977, a year before the Castro became officially the Castro Street Neighborhood Commercial District, a year before the Jonestown Massacre, and a year before the assassination of Harvey Milk, our gay godfather. Time becomes distorted when I read the poem. I swear I was reading this as if it was written yesterday. I find myself asking, where will you be to my peers in these end of times? <coughs> Parker, she comes as an oracle, delivering a message I must decode in its afterlife and connect to larger geographical discourses such as gentrification and the plantational scene. Poetry is not a luxury. Scholar Malik Uzwanya Crutchfield's article, Capturing a Black <coughs> Aesthetic, Urbanity, Racialized Space, and Spatial Poetics, provides me an analytic to read the poetics of displacement in the subtle forms of visual expression and also literary cartography. She examines how the poetics of space and the way that humans experience intimate spaces uniquely creates a black phenomenology in the process of articulation. I seek to unearth and return to Parker and the spatial phenomena she is hungry to unveil to us, where will you be? Pat Parker, a black lesbian feminist poet, known for her activism in Oakland and San Francisco, is central into my inquiry of homonationalism. Homonationalism is a term by Jasper Puar that explains how mainstream queer politics are essentially uninterested US nationalist values such as exceptionalism, colonial spatial order, and the social devaluation of non-white subjects. Puar argues that the production of acceptable queerness allows for these values to remain unchallenged in our operations abroad. She quotes, Nations and its associations with modernity and racial and class hierarchies become the defining factor in disaggregating between upright domestic domesticable queerness that mimics and recenter liberal subjecthood and out of control untetherable queerness. End quote. Further, the production of gay and queer bodies is crucial for the deployment of nationalism, insofar as these perverse bodies reiterate heterosexuality as norm, but also because certain domesticated homosexual bodies provide ammunition to reinforce nationalist projects. Where will you be? I take this question two ways. Parker ha may have some insights as a black lesbian activist, the founder of the Oakland Feminist Health Center, that some trouble may, be, may lie ahead. The discourses of queerness may prevent us from being righteous, and Parker may know that we were never meant to survive and that our future is uncertain, that our existence may constitute in the elsewhere that there is a certain level of, of eroticism in our, in our dispossession. Nevertheless, homonationalism is important for me. It always has. I remember reading the text and finding freedom in what I had been feeling, to understand sexuality as a modality of racialization. Black lesbians are intentionally left out of the assemblage of acceptable queerness, forever deviant. Homonationalism, as it has been theorized, is rooted in the inquiry of conquest abroad. However, in the emergence, however, I see the emergence and the uneven spatial development of San Francisco Bay Area, and I, today I'm questioning, where will we be? In 1976, a year before Parker's poem, Barbara Smith, a part of the Combehe River Collective, poses the question, is it possible to be a black lesbian writer and to live to tell about it? Black feminist theorizations of space are deeply poetic, active, and offer pathways to return to unresolved questions and unsolved mysteries of the past. Gentrification studies has attempted to create knowledge in order to be legitimated by the neoliberal university, but I feel it never takes the time to notice and acknowledge that people are not living to the other side of the story, or are not physically present. Ultimately, our task should be to disrupt case studies that focus on race and social problems without examining movements often masking the active racial practices in the local state and of local, and of local capital, in the words of Clive Woods. Parker says they will come in business suits to buy your homes and bring bodies to fill your jobs. The clinical geographical answer is to assert that by the means of overaccumulation, <coughs> uneven geographic developments will determine the conditions in which savage de devaluation will take place. I call it ephemeral landscapes of black social death. This is why the Black Lesbian Archive must be on Earth, because we then knew that. We knew that before the book came out in 2003, way before the stamp of approval of a peer review article asserted that he without land is savage. Poetry is not a luxury. 
I remind myself this fact. A black lesbian reading of space reminds us to remember how we know what we know, to reach deep inside our intellectual reserves, and become conscious of the foundational moments of when we became the other. Mass marginalization leads to premature death. The black lesbian, will she live to tell about it? These were not rhetorics. We must make these notions more than an abstraction, but a concrete abstraction, or a concrete articulation rooted in the act of witnessing, in this case, the witnessing of disappearance. What would it look like to have a conversation about gentrification from the perspective, the vantage point of a black lesbian consciousness? Would it be unrigorous, not provide enough evidence? Barbara Smith came across the same dilemma stating, practically all academic presses as well as trade presses commented that my subject was not important and that people were not interested in black women writers. Couldn't I write a book on the social problems of black women, affected by the rhetoric of Ala Moniahan? Most of these presses could hardly believe black women were artists, writers, and thinkers. A black lesbian reading of space, thus, is not founded. Oh, that was the end of that quote. This is me now. <laughs> a black lesbian reading of space, thus, is not founded or indebted to any canon or any tradition. Can her testimony not just be fact, can it be proof? Contesting rigor is an intervention. And we understand, oh, and can we understand lesbians not just to be the pornographic, but the erotic sensation of asserting the testimony of the black woman? Catherine McKittrick in 2006 poses, can black feminist geographies be differently conceptualized as heterogeneous, alterable political sites that are continually intervening in rather than reinscribing the ongoing legacy of racism, sexism? Reading Parker is like reading for haunted spaces and spectral bodies. Her poetry is an act of documentation that she experienced in a similar <coughs> witnessing to black queer identity within regimes of spatial change that we now call in the old white man field of geography the spatial temporal fix in academic terms. Her words register outside the dominant public sphere's visible historical narrative of what a gay San Francisco is. As we race to theorize historical moments as rupture, we tend to forget about the ephemerality of queerness, that expressions change, that, but the conditions don't. There's always been an effort to eliminate queer possibility, in this case, the possibility of a black lesbian archive provides this evidence of self-knowing. Queer inquiry has an authority, and as Jose Munoz states, queer acts rewrite the protocols of critical writing, so I must write, and I'm, Okay, and then this is me now. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so I must write and I must respond to Parker's article, Where Will You Be? And her questions are not simply rhetorical. I provide a quote from Sylvia Winter that instructs my inquiry. Rather than seeking to rhetorically demystify, a deciphering term seeks to decipher what a process of rhetorical mystification does. It seeks to identify not what text and their significant practices can be interpreted to mean, but what they can be deciphered to do. It also seeks to evaluate the warning force and procedures with which they do what they do. And therefore, Parker has warned us, not that fascists will take the queers first by violence, but instead by compromise and assimilation. It will be different. What does it do to study poetry? It contests regimes of rigor and determines how capital enables and simultaneously displaces black queer spatial embodiments and formations. The carcerality of knowledge production leaves us without <coughs> possibilities. The black lesbian must be abstracted. She must be made to be more than a metaphor for the pornographic and then made into a figure. Then we must interrogate, interrogate what does queerness actually do? Really, like what does queerness actually do? I mean, when we use it. What does it invoke beyond the pornographic and the intimate? Clyde Wood poses a question. Are these communities fragmented because they are on the margin of civilization? Or is it because they are on the front lines of globalization and global racialization, end quote. Homonationalism assumes an elsewhere, a hegemonic whiteness within a whiteness. But what if we told it with the black lesbian archive, with black localities and black intimacies? Thank you.